And it's got some mailbag stuff that I want to show you. Let's check it out together. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Let's see what's in this thing first. This is big and fairly heavy. Uh, it's, yeah, I'll go there. There you go. There's two things stacked together. If you don't have a round knife yet, you should definitely get one. They're far safer than a knife. Mainly because they're pretty blunt. Okay. We have some Creality filament. Now I purchased these from... I think it was AliExpress I got these from. Let's have a look. These are both... PLA, if I remember rightly. It's a shame we've got the tape wrapped everywhere, anyway, from one. So, 1.75mm white PLA, so one kilo. I wanted to get a couple of different colours because I actually wanted black originally. I was looking around and thought, oh, yeah, okay, I'll get some white too because I might use white for something. And because um, the only black I've got was in ABS. So yeah, there's, there's a white one, so this one should be a black one. So it's got the same details, 180 to 215 degrees C, so that's the same as the, the white one I think it was, so I'll double check, yep. So it's got a lower melt temperature than my existing PLA which is stated as 190 to 230. What that means is that this will have a lower molecular weight, a shorter chain length of the molecules in order to make it flow easier sooner or it's got some additives in there which make it easier to flow probably a bit of both more than likely it's just lower molecular weight material anyone knows about plastics materials will know what I'm talking about if you don't then don't worry about it so we'll see how that compares to the other stuff I've got the other stuff I've been using doing printing just fine so I'll have to be very in mind if I'm using this stuff that it's uh, requires a lower temperature well it may require a lower temperature I do tend to print a higher temperature than normal High temperature and faster speed, you get it through a nozzle quicker, so it doesn't burn. But anyway, how about it? Let's see what's in this one. When I find out where the top is. <laughs> there it is, here we go. Packet of knobs. So these are they spline shaft? Yeah, they are spline shaft. I don't think you better see that in there though. Maybe you can. Well, let's try. Mm. Yeah. So it is spline shaft, but it's not like a typical spline. Usually they're more aggressive splines than that. There's only you know random ones in there. It's like it's missing every other one. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I got these because I wanted them for the spares. I didn't actually want them for anything in particular, but I thought, well, doing CB radio stuff, sometimes you just need another knob because you just don't have a knob to put on there or there's one missing or broken or something like that. I thought, well, these look quite nice. So I thought I'd just get some of these. They might be suitable as replacements. And of course, they're cheap. Of course, there'll be links down below for all this sort of stuff. Oh, let's see what's in here. I guess we'll find out soon enough. No? No? Where's the, where's the edge? Oh, come on. I think that's an edge. Yeah, there we go. Here's the front. All right. this? Oh, it has some screws and some little brackets. Now these are for MacBook trackpads, so recognize those. Plenty of padding, that's brilliant. This is nicely packaged actually, I'll give them credit for that. So in here we have two trackpads of MacBooks. 
Uh, I'm not going to get one out, I don't think. Oh, maybe I will. It's not looking too bad. There you go. Uh, these are used, but I don't care. It probably, as long as it's not liquid damaged, that doesn't matter. Okay, so I've got, I think, one or two MacBooks here with bad trackpads. Can't remember exactly. I definitely got one anyway. I might have two. I did a resolve it. I think it might be needed cable. I can't remember now. So, yeah, new, new, uh, new trackpads to go with those. And obviously mounting kits as well, because uh, I think I had, yeah, one of the MacBooks I got, the trackpad didn't work. And it had screws missing out of the brackets. So I'm pretty sure that uh, that had been put in there as you know when I sold it to me as parts, you know. What's in this one? Make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos and that sort of stuff too. If you're not already subscribed and you've only just found the channel, I've got lots of videos, I've got hundreds of them. Mailbag videos, repair videos, 3D printing, that sort of stuff. Right, now these are MagSafe cables. Now I've got some of these before. An issue that I found is that it actually registered as a 60 watt MagSafe, not a 85 watt MagSafe. So when I was trying to use it on a um, 15 inch MacBook to try and repair it, it wouldn't power up from it because it was the wrong charger and it's causing me problems actually trying to do the repair. So having the right MacBook charger is a requirement. You can use a 85 watt on a 13 inch MacBook, but you can't use a 60 watt on a 15 or 17 inch MacBook. So you have to be careful which way around you go. And one I put previously, which is on my power supply over here, just see in shot, um, that was supposed to be an 85 watt, but I think it was anyway. Maybe I only got a 60 because that's what I found at the time, I can't remember. But that's only a 60 watt. So I'm hoping this one now registers an 85 watt. Actually, I might fire up a MacBook and have a look. We'll hook this up. Okay, so this is one of the MacBooks I've repaired. As you can see, it's still working. So I've connected up the new cable to it. And this is in the system info box of MacBooks. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm looking at. And there you go. This is what reports about the cable. There you go, 85 watt. So it's reporting as an 85 watt cable. So that's fine, that's all good. All right? And it is actually charging as well. You can see here it says charging down there. You can see hopefully up here is a charging icon. So the cable's working fine. So that's good. So at least I know that that will do the job. All right, so that's what I needed is an 85 watt cable that way I can use it in any MacBook. All I'm actually doing is manipulating the voltage on here to suit the MacBook. So if it's a 15 inch or a 17 inch MacBook, then I'm using 18 and a half volts. If it's a 13 inch, I'm using 16 and a half volts because that's what they require. It's uh, it's working and it's charging. So when I see this number go up, to be sure, but the current's looking like it's charging. So it's looking good. And the uh, number's gone up, so it's definitely putting power in. That's fine. All right, I'll see what's in this one. Also, share the video with your friends as well. If you ever, you know, the more you can share this video around, you know, post it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. If you see something that interests you, or you think a friend or something you know might be interested in it as well, make sure you share it because that sort of thing helps to grow my channel quite a lot. Sharing the videos is quite important, so I don't underestimate the power of that. You know, if you can share it, that helps me out quite a bit. And these are MacBook logic board screws, I think. Yep, they got pentalobe. All right, there you go. Pentalobe type screws. Yeah, yeah. shows up. So I've got a bunch of these because I had some MacBooks, which again I picked up used, and they had screws missing. So I've got screws. At least now I've got a stock of them, so I've definitely got spares. If I lose any, it doesn't matter. Let's go and get another one. It's always very helpful. So this one. And these are some more brackets for the MacBook trackpads, complete sets. So these are probably all used as well. I mean, I think these basically get salvaged from computers when they get sent to China to be dismantled. So I think they just um, 
they salvage these parts and resell them. And I think that's a great thing. It's recycling. I, I certainly don't disapprove. I don't care about getting used parts as long as they're in good condition. So that's fine. I mean, that could be brand new, but I suspect they're probably salvaged. They do a really good job of cleaning parts up, so you can't actually tell. Yeah, there's a bit of mark on that. So that's salvaged parts. But I say, that's fine. I don't care. At least you know these are good quality original Apple parts. You know, that's the thing. Make sure to share it, subscribe, click the bell icon, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for dropping by. Catch you later. I've got some of my mailbag stuff here. So stick around, check it out. I want to show you what I've got. Make sure you drop down in the comments down here and have a read and, you know, contribute and have a bit of a conversation too down there. I know I always read the comments. I read every comment. So if you want to say something to me or we want to have a chat with me, go down in the comments and put something down there. All right, so look at the first thing. It's a lightning cable for Apple iPhone, or iPad, whatever. It's a Blitzwolf. Now, I've purchased a few Blitzwolf things so now, and they've always been really good. So it's you know, a standard USB 2 connector, nothing too splashy about that, but it's got a nice design on the plug. It's a nice flex. Let's try the lightning plug, which is the way, the way they usually fail, but that also feels all nice. It looks like a good quality cable. You know, it's anything I've purchased has been Blitzwolf has been good quality. I reckon they're worth uh, looking at if you're going to buy anything. I purchased some Blitzwolf earphones, and those are really nice. I've actually bought some more. Yeah, that's a 1.8 meter cable. There'll be links down below for these things too. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, flip me down. Oh no. Some more cables. I think these might be lightning cables as well. Yep. Yeah. These are more like your standard, like generic kind of cable. Oh, they feel nice enough quality. Yeah, I mean, they feel okay. It's a nice thick cable, so it should be quite strong. Yeah, uh, it's. How long is this one, does it say? Don't know. Don't long these ones are. I think they're probably about 1.2 meters or something like that as well. I might be longer. I'll be links down below for these as well. So I think they're going to be fairly robust. There was a bit of a strain relief on that plug. Not much of one, but there is a little bit of one. Yeah, but these also seem okay. It doesn't seem as nice as the Blitzwolf though. The Blitzwolf does seem nicer. So it's in this one. Made of important materials and made in China. They say things are English in it. All right, this is um, solder tinning, like to get a soldering iron tip tinning stuff. All right, so that's what it looks like on the front there. Lead free. Oh dear, lead free tinning stuff. That's not what I wanted. I wanted lead type tinning stuff anyway, never mind. So yeah, you just dip your iron in that and just refresh your tip and just keep it tinned. That's what it's for. Just to help freshen the tips up. I thought I'd get some, I haven't had any before, so that's a new thing for me, but I've seen other people using it, so I thought, oh yeah, I'll give it a go. Because my tips do tend to end up a bit dirty looking. And I'll give an example of one of the bad ones. You know, it's a little bit dirty there. You know, there's flux residue and shit like that around there. And then another one here, which is a little bit corroded up. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll get some of this and see if it does anything. See if it's worth bothering with or not. All right, see what's in this one. It's some RS, so it has to be capacitors, doesn't it? Take a bag inside of a bag. Inside, you know, inside a plastic bag, inside a paper bag, inside a bag. It's like unnecessary packaging much. Anyway, so yes, they are, these are capacitors. These are service mount caps. So these are, uh, what? Don't know, you can't read it. 10 microfarad, 25 volt. That's what they are. So these will be for the Magic TV box, which I was fixing. You haven't seen it yet because I haven't published a video. I've, I've sort of. Oh, did I? I can't remember. Yeah, so th this is 
for that Magic TV box. So I pull the thing apart again now and replace those caps, which I'm suspicious of. And see if that solves the problem. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon. Thank you to my Patreons who support me, and if anyone wants to help support my channel, help me to buy things from Mailbag, Patreon, links down below. And at the end of the video too, it's in there. Catch you later. I'm manipulating the voltage on here to suit the MacBook. So if it's a 15 or 17 inch, I'm using 18 and a half watts, uh, 18 and a half volts. Yeah, if it's 15 or 17 inch MacBook, I'm using 18 and a half watts. Oh my god! Cut that bit out. If it's a 15 inch or a 17 inch MacBook, then I'm using 18 and a half volts.